Okay, good morning everybody. First of all, I'd like to say sorry and apologize to all the students taking notes today. You will find today's notes very difficult because there are a lot of new words and there are a lot of difficult words. So try your best, but I'm just warning you. And you'll know why as I, I continue. Now, Halloween is coming. Next week in TCSS, we will have our Hello English celebration. There will be game booths in the hall. We will be celebrating for two days. It will be a lot of fun. I hope as many students as possible can join. But I thought since Halloween is coming, our topic today should be this. What are you afraid of? What do you fear? What makes you feel very frightened? Now, most people in their lives have some fears of some things. For example, maybe you are afraid of ghosts, if you believe ghosts exist. Maybe you are afraid of spiders, I'm afraid of spiders. Maybe you are afraid of these little things, cockroaches or insects. Maybe you are afraid of dogs, you're afraid the dog will bite you. Maybe you're afraid of the dark. When the lights go out, you're afraid of what's hiding in the dark. Maybe you're afraid of heights, falling from a great height. You can't look down when you're at the top of your building. Maybe you're afraid of injections. This one is a little unfortunate because we need injections now to fight COVID, but maybe you're afraid when you go for your injection. Maybe you're afraid of flying, getting on an aeroplane, traveling. And one common fear for all students is exams. Maybe you're afraid of exams. So these fears are normal. I would say most people have some fears in their lives. But when a fear becomes abnormal, when a fear becomes irrational, when a fear becomes illogical, when a fear takes over your life, when you keep thinking about it, when you are so worried about it, you can't live your daily life, then it's a problem. It becomes a disease. It becomes an illness. And we call this kind of fear, where it's too big, too strong, too intense, we call this a phobia. That's a very, very strong fear of something. And not only a strong fear, it's illogical. Sometimes it has no logic. It's not rational. You can't explain it. It's like an illness. Now, how do we use this word phobia? You can say, for example, spiders. She has a fear of spiders. That's normal, to fear something like spiders. You can also say, if it's a bit stronger, she has a spider phobia. That means a stronger fear. And if you want to be really, really impressive, you can use the medical name which is often taken from Latin or Greek. And you can say she suffers from arachnophobia. Arachno is the Greek word for spider. Which one sounds more impressive if you say, I have a fear of spiders, or I suffer from arachnophobia? The last one is more persuasive. It makes it sound more terrible. So we're learning about phobias today so you can impress people with your knowledge. Or dogs. You can say she has a fear of dogs, she has a dog phobia, or you can use the medical word. She suffers from sinophobia. Sounds more impressive, sounds more serious. And let's not leave out cats, okay? She has a fear of cats, she has a cat phobia, she suffers from ailurophobia. Wow, what's that? Nobody knows, but it sounds impressive. Now, some phobias have become common in English. We hear them very often, and we see them in the news. So I want to share a few common phobias with you now. One is claustrophobia. Claustrophobia is fear of small spaces. So people with claustrophobia cannot, for example, travel in a lift very easily. Or if this room is very small, they feel unsafe, they feel fear. So claustrophobia, fear of small spaces. Then we have the opposite of claustrophobia, which is agoraphobia.
That is fear of crowds, fear of open spaces. When there are too many people around you, you suffer from agoraphobia. This is a very serious illness for some people. And in a place like Hong Kong, it's very difficult to suffer from agoraphobia because Hong Kong is usually very crowded on the streets. You may have heard this one in the news, homophobia, homophobia. This means a fear of gay people. This is often a common topic in the news these days. And another common topic is xenophobia. Xenophobia means fear of foreigners, foreign people. They come to our country, they don't speak like us, they don't dress like us, they don't behave like us. We're afraid of them. We suffer from xenophobia. And linked to xenophobia a little is Islamophobia, also in the news these days. That is a fear of Muslims. Don't know why, don't understand it, but some people suffer from this. Okay? So these are some common phobias you might see in the news. Now, there are many, many phobias. There are hundreds of phobias, and some of them you've never heard before, but you could maybe guess the meaning from the beginning of the word. So let's see if we can guess a few phobias now. Aerophobia. Can anybody guess what that is? Fear of what? Have you heard of any words beginning with aero before? Aeroplane. Fear of flying. Aerophobia. Or how about this? Arithmophobia. Have you heard of any words beginning with arith? Arithmo? Arithmetic? Any ideas what that is? Fear of maths, fear of numbers. I have arithmophobia, I can tell you. Bibliophobia? Maybe you've heard of bibliography, a list of books. So this is a fear of books, bibliophobia. Cyberphobia? You must know this one, cyberphobia, cyber. Fear of computers, fear of technology. Sometimes I have a cyberphobia. Dentophobia? Have you heard of any words that sound like dento? Dentist? Fear of dentists? Dentophobia? And hydrophobia? Have you heard of hydroelectricity? Or when you don't drink enough water, you are dehydrated. So hydro has to do with water. So it's a fear of water. So these are some we can guess. And the last one, zoophobia. What's that about? What do you see in a zoo? Of course, it's fear of animals. Now, those are some common phobias. You can actually have a phobia about anything. And doctors have noticed that some people have phobias to very strange things. So I'm going to introduce some strange phobias now, where you can't really guess that somebody would be afraid of this thing. For example, electorophobia is a fear of chickens. Why would anybody be afraid of chickens? But some people have been in the past. Doctors have noticed this. Amaxophobia is a fear of riding in a car. You can't get in the car. If you do, you freak out. Cholerophobia is a fear of clowns. Why are people afraid of clowns? They're usually happy and jolly and fun. Well, some people are. This is one of my favorites, Componophobia. It's a fear of buttons on your clothes. Now, what can a button do to harm you? I have no idea, but remember, phobias are irrational. They are illogical. Some people are afraid of buttons. Some people are afraid of spoons. That's called cutaliophobia. They can't touch a spoon, they can't see a spoon, they can't use a spoon. Very strange. This is a phobia that I think we would never find in Hong Kong or China. Octophobia, the fear of the number eight. I think number eight is lucky in Chinese culture, is that right? But some people are afraid of number eight, octophobia. Some people are afraid of eggs, ovophobia. Very strange. Some people are afraid of feet, podophobia. This one I will never understand, and I think nobody in this room has this phobia, somniphobia. 
fear of sleeping. I think nobody has that in this room. I certainly don't. And this one, I can't believe. Pepper luciophobia. You can guess this from Pepper. It's a fear of pizza. We were talking about pizza last week. Some people, for some reason, it's illogical, it's irrational, they are afraid of pizzas. Maybe the look, the smell, the taste. So anyway, fear of pizza. I'm sure Miss Daria does not have pepperluciophobia. Now, when you have a phobia, what can you do? Well, you can suffer. Or you can take steps to overcome your phobia. How do we do this? The best way is what we call exposure therapy. That means facing your fear and learning to cope with it and learning to accept it and understand it. So, for example, let's take an example of spiders. Do you remember the name of this phobia? Arachnophobia, fear of spiders. What can we do to overcome this? Well, first of all, we can get knowledge. Read a book about spiders. Find out that they are not so dangerous. Then, maybe we hold a picture of a spider. Not a real spider, just a picture. Just to get used to the idea. Then the next step, if we're successful with holding a picture, is visiting some spiders in the zoo, actually seeing them live. And then the final step, if we're very brave, is holding a spider in our hands. And when we've done that, we've overcome our phobia. We no longer have this phobia. We are no longer arachnophobic. So this is a way to face our fears. And I think this is true in life. If you have a fear, don't run away from it. Face it. It's not as scary as you imagine. Imagination is often scarier than the real thing. Now, I've just said we should overcome our phobias, but I think some phobias can be quite useful to suffer from. So let me give you some useful ones for you. Arithmophobia, fear of maths, is a useful one. When Mr. Chan asks you for your maths homework, you can say, sorry Mr. Chan, I can't give you my maths homework. I suffer from arithmophobia. It's a good excuse, okay? So make a note of that. Bibliophobia, fear of books. Oh, sorry, Miss Chan. I can't give you my homework because I couldn't open my book. I have bibliophobia. Good excuse, huh? This one is one of my favorites, devoirphobia. Fear of homework. I'm sorry, teacher. I have devoirphobia. You have to forgive me. And this may be the best one of all to say to your parents when you get up in the morning, sorry mum, sorry, sorry dad, I have scolionophobia, fear of school. Now, the only way you can use these excuses is if a doctor has told you that you really have this phobia, otherwise nobody will believe you. So you have to be certified by a doctor first. But that's impossible if you have iatrophobia, which is fear of doctors then you can't go and see the doctor to get certified. So, I'm afraid today is the last time I will be speaking to you in the hall. No more Mr. Grove speaking to you, because I've developed some phobias. I have agoraphobia. Do you remember what that is? Fear of crowds. Look, there's a crowd. I'm feeling sweaty, I'm feeling anxious, I'm feeling nervous because I have agoraphobia. I have glossophobia, which is a fear of speaking in public. Here I am speaking in public, I'm afraid, I have glossophobia, I can't do it anymore. I've also developed pedophobia, which is fear of children. Sorry, you make me afraid, I can't do this anymore. But even more specific, I have ephebiphobia, which is a fear of teenagers, which means you. I'm afraid of you, so I won't be speaking anymore. So bye bye Mr. Groves. But what did I just say? How do you overcome phobias? You face them. So I guess I should come back next time to face my fear and overcome my phobias. Okay, so maybe not the last time, you'll see. Now, to finish, did you develop a phobia this morning? I am sure that you now have a phobia which you didn't have when you were coming into the hall. And let me tell you this phobia, and this is why I apologize to the note takers. You have Hippopotamonstrosis Quipedaliophobia. 
I'm sure everybody in this room has this. Don't try to write it down. <laughs> it means the fear of long words. And isn't it ironic that the word for the fear of long words is the longest word you've ever seen? So I think that uh, summarizes my talk for today. Thank you very much.